Hello and welcome back. So we continue with our app class. So let's finish up here real quick. So at this point we have the URL. Uh, this is the array right here that we have. Okay. So let's do something with this stuff. So first of all, what we need to do is to find a controller named products. So the way it works is that this first part here is the controller name. The second one is the method name. And then the rest of these are just parameters we will use to retrieve data in our database. So we can put as many as we want uh, down here in the URL. So first of all, let's find the product uh, controller. So the controller will be a class. And then inside that class, just the way we have this class right here, there are functions inside there. So what we are telling it is that we need a products controller and inside that controller, the class, which is the controller, we want a food function, function named food. So controller and then that function, that's when we run and then everything will happen inside there. So let's come back here and see how we can achieve that. So I'll leave this show URL here so that we can see what happens down here. So at this point, we want to check if the file exists. So let me just put if file exists. So I'm looking for a file, which is named after the first thing in the, in the URL. So I'm going to just look for this file inside the app folder, inside controllers, because it's a controller. And then in there, I'm going to concatenate the URL first item. And then not forgetting the .php at the end, since these are all PHP files. Now I'm going to convert this to a lower string to lower, to lower case so that I don't have to deal with those issues of capitalization and so on. So if the file exists, then we know it exists. So this is good. What we will do since it exists is to replace this controller, the default controller with whatever the controller the user has supplied in the URL. So I'll say this controller is equal to that. And of course, not forgetting the string to lower. Like this. Okay, so this equal to that. And then what we do now is unset this thing. We don't need it anymore. So I'll say unset this guy over there. Very good. So now that we have actually found this, let me move, let me add some space here. Now, even if we don't find this file, we already have a default controller right there. That's why the default is home. So whether we found this or not is irrelevant. But if we did find it, we're going to replace this home with whatever was in there. So at this point, we are sure that there's a value in there. So I'm going to load that file. I'm going to require it actually. So I'll require this, I'll copy that, paste here. Now remember that we've unset this one. It's no longer in case this happened, so we've unset this. So instead I'm going to use that. Since we've set, we've assigned it to this now. And then what I will do is instantiate whatever this class is. I'm going to say this controller is equal to new, this controller. So this is exactly as saying this app is equal to new app, app. Only that here we are using dynamic variables. That's it. So now that we've instantiated the class, we can check if it has a method, a method of food. Now, before you go any further, I'm going to show you that at this point, let me do another show URL down here. Oh, it won't actually work because we don't have that controller. Oh, okay. So it's complaining that uh, it hasn't found this controller home. So it's important to have at least one controller inside the controllers 
So let's create one right now. Create a new file inside controllers. Save it. This one will be the home controller. So it's home.php. This is the default controller that should always be there. So that even if the user uh, is on the home page, at least they'll have something to show. So here I will say class home. Okay, there we go. So we've created our home class. And then if we go back to up here, you see that the default method is index. So let's create that default method. Now a method is a, simply a function. Function, oh, it's index. That's the default one. Like so. Okay. So our class home is there. Our method index is there. So this is a public one. So I'll say public. That's public. So which satisfies this. So it means whether the user puts anything there or not, we're going to have this run just fine. So let's test this. And there we go. So everything is running. Now we are echoing the URL at the beginning and then echoing it again at the end here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you that if the controller that we are requesting for is found, it will disappear here. So let me convert products here to home because I know the home one exists. So you see now that we have less items here because the home has been used and discarded. So now let's deal with the next item, which is food in this case, but let's change it to something that exists, which is index. Okay. So at this point, let me come back here. What I want us to do is ask the question if is set. Let me copy this. If the next item in the list is actually set. If it is, then let's check if there's a method that exists with that name. So I'm going to say if method exists so what object are we looking for this method in inside our class that we've just instantiated, of course. So let me put that. And then the method name. So method name in our case is inside this URL. Like so. So just for consistency as well, I'm going to just say URL is equal to string to lower URL so that uh, we're just using lowercase values like that. Okay. So that method there. So if the method exists, we're going to go through here and all I'm going to tell it is to, to assign, to change that value there. I'm going to say method is equal to this one right here. Thank you very much, but don't forget the this keyword like so. So this method is equal to this. And since we already have used this, let's unset it. Okay, good. So let's see what happens now. So as you can see the items in the array, they came in full, but they are slowly being removed. So if I kept adding other things here, like seven or eight or if there were other things in here and press enter you see that uh, the rest of them are here they came in like this we used the controller and the method name but then the rest we're going to use for our database but the problem with this array is it starts at two which is not very good so we must make it start at zero at least so to do that is very simple what i will do is Actually, I'm going to assign the remaining uh, items into another variable. I'm going to call this one params, like so. So what I will say is I'm going to, if right here when it says show, if I add a function called array values, 
what array values does is that it creates a new array and gets all the values from one array and puts them in inside an array and forgets about the keys so just the values themselves and as a result the new array usually starts from zero so if i refresh now you see that we've lost these two here but still here we are starting at zero and so on which is good nice and clean so i will use the same thing copy here i will say params this params so this params is equal to now at this point it's very possible that this array could be empty so we're going to check for that i'm going to say count url so if count url is greater than zero meaning there are items in this uh in this array so if there are items in this uh, in this array question mark we are going to assign this same url to this so i'll put that this one here put a full colon and then at the end here i'm going to say um well if in case uh, there's nothing I'm just going to say home there but I'll put this inside square brackets to make it an array so it's just an array of one item like this so this param could be equal to one array with home or could be equal to an array that's supplied by the user okay so I don't need this anymore since we already know what's going on at this point Right, so the only thing remaining now is to actually run this class. So if I go to the home controller, what we are looking for, since this is a default controller, is the class named home. Now it's important that the file name is also named home, just like the class name, so that it's easy to find, because that's what the app is looking for. It's looking for the same file name here. So if it's not the same, it won't work. So we're looking for the class called home, which we have found here. And then we are looking for a method called index, which we have found here. So now we need to tell it to actually run this function and this method. So to do that, we're going to use a function called core user array func, core user func array. So this thing asks for a few things. Now in here it asks for a function, but we're going to give it an empty array. And then parameters are going to be these params here. But in here, we're going to give it our the controller name. So I'm going to copy controller name here and put it there. And then, of course, we're going to give it the method name. And that's actually it. So at this point, we are going to run uh, this function. So to make sure that the function is running, let me come back here and refresh and you see this is remaining there. Let me remove the show at the top there. I refresh. So we see an empty page, but in order to know that the home controller is actually being accessed here, I'm going to echo something from here. I'm going to say, this is the home class inside index function or index method okay so if i refresh i see that there so this is how we run uh different things so if i had a different controller for example let me just uh give an example here real quick if i copy what's in here create a new controller I'll change the class name, of course, to, uh, let's say, products. Save this inside controllers. So this is going to be our products controller.php. So I'll change this. This is the products. So if I go back here and refresh, you see we're still on the home page. But if I change home to products now, you see now that we are accessing a very different function altogether, a very different file. So this is the products class inside index method. 
So just like this, we've created a routing system that selects a different file de depending on what's inside the URL. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where we do something more.